This is Francis Albert Sinatra. He was born December the 12th, 1915, in Hoboken, New Jersey. Frank Sinatra will become one of the most influential performers of the 20th century. He has sold over 150 million records worldwide and appeared in over 50 films. Frank was an only child belonging to Antonio Martino Sinatra, called Marty. Marty immigrated with his family from Palermo, Sicily, when he was 11 years old. Marty started his career as a boxer. He used the name Marty O'Brien as Italians were unwelcome in boxing. After some 30 professional fights as a bantamweight, his boxing career ended after breaking his wrist. His wife, Dolly, had helped him get a job as a fireman, and he'll eventually rise to the rank of captain with the Hoboken Fire Department. Frank's mother was Natalie Garibunti. She was given the nickname of Dolly at a very young age. Her family said that she looked like a little doll. She immigrated with her family from Genoa, Italy, when Dolly was only a few months old. She later became involved in democratic politics and become one of a few women ever awarded as ward leader in Hoboken. When Frank Sinatra was born, the doctor was called to the Sinatra's apartment. Frank weighed 13 and a half pounds, and the doctor had to use forceps for the delivery. In the course of the delivery, the left side of his face was severely scarred. Years later, he would use makeup to cover the scars and one eardrum was damaged, affecting him for life, even registering him as 4F during World War II. The baby Sinatra was born blue and not breathing. The doctor believed that he was stillborn and set him aside to attend to the mother. It was not until the grandmother slapped the baby's back and run him under cold water did he begin to breathe. As the family began making more money, they moved a few blocks away to a more affluent neighborhood, 703 Park Avenue, when Frank was 12 years old. And at the same time, his parents opened a tavern at 333 Jefferson. They named it Marty O'Brien's for Marty's Boxing Days. Dolly had become influential in Hoboken politics and made the most of it. During Prohibition, their tavern stayed open and it was said by the blessing of the mob and city officials. Now Dolly doted on Frankie, buying him expensive clothes, but beating him when she lost her temper. Young Frank would do his schoolwork sitting on a bar stool. He would sing while sitting on a tavern piano, and when someone gave him a nickel, he thought that was great. On January the 28th, 1931, Frank entered Demerset High School in Hoboken. And during junior high, the kids had made fun of him and called him Scarface from his birth scars, causing him not to like school. He was soon expelled from high school for general rowdiness, and teachers said that he was lazy and had no ambition. In order to not disappoint his mother, he enrolled at the Drake Business School, but he dropped out after 11 months. His parents said in order to keep him from becoming a bum, they had found him a regular job as a delivery boy at the Jersey Observer newspaper where his godfather, Frank Garrett, worked. Dolly also helped her son get singing jobs at different clubs and events. In 1935, Dolly persuaded a local singing group called the Three Flashes to let him join. They said they took him on the road because... He's the only one who had a car. Sinatra begged the group to let him join the act when he learned that they was going to audition for the Major Bowles Amateur Hour. They changed their name to the Hoboken Four. They won a six-month contract to perform across the country on stage and radio. Frank quickly became the lead singer. The group became jealous, and they began having conflicts, resulting in fistfights. Frank quit halfway through the tour, said he was just tired of fighting. In 1938, Frank was working as a singing waiter at the roadhouse named The Rustic Cabin in Englewood Cliff, New Jersey, for $15 a week. 
At times, the Rusty Cabin would broadcast dances over WNEW, a radio station in New York City. Sinatra would wait on tables, and then he'd pull off his apron, step on the stage, and sang with the Bill Henry Orchestra. He was popular with the girls, and it sometimes got him into trouble. One night in November of 1938, while in the back seat of an automobile in the parking lot of the club with a married woman, the police knocked on the window, and the woman began to holler rape, afraid of what her husband might think. Frank was arrested, and this mugshot was taken. He spent 16 hours in jail before the lady dropped the charges. And as Frank would sing later, and that's why the lady is a tramp. While still working at the rustic cabin, on February the 4th, 1939, Frank Sinatra marries Natalie, or Nancy, Rose Barbado in her hometown of Jersey City, New Jersey. Frank had met Nancy back in 1934 when he was 19 and she was 17. He was spending the summer with his Aunt Josie in Long Beach on the Jersey Shore, and Nancy was vacationing with her family in a big house across the road from him. Frank come over with his ukulele when he seen her sitting on the porch. They stayed in touch and began dating. After their marriage, they set up housekeeping at 137 Virgin Avenue, Jersey City. While Frank sang at the rusty cabin, Nancy went to work as a secretary. According to their daughter, Nancy, in her book, Frank Sinatra, an American Legend, her mother took a $15 advance so that Frank could make publicity pictures and send to band leader Harry James. When Harry heard Sinatra on the radio, he already knew what he looked like. Frank was offered $75 per week with his first performance at the Baltimore Hippodrome. Nancy went on tour with Frank and the band in the fall of 1939 and cooked spaghetti for everyone when a club owner didn't pay James for the gig. They had to scrape up enough money to buy groceries. According to their daughter Nancy's book, it was the happiest days of their marriage. On June 8, 1940, Frank and Nancy's first child was born, Nancy Sandra Sinatra at the Marguerite Haig Hospital in Jersey City. Nancy will stay in New Jersey with her daughter, and Frank will continue on tour. Sometime during this period, Willie Moretti, underboss of the Genevieve crime family, heard Sinatra sing and took an interest in his career. There's been all kinds of rumors about Sinatra's connection with the mob. It was reported that one of Nancy's cousins had been a soldier or a captain under Moretti. It was common knowledge that the mob controlled most of the clubs in New Jersey and New York. You couldn't find a singing job without some kind of contact with club owners that was a front for organized crime. Willie would see that Frank could sing at the best places, and in the crime world, Moretti soon became known as Frank Sinatra's godfather or protector. In 1941, the Tommy Dorsey Band was in a movie called Las Vegas Nights. Frank appeared briefly with the band singing, I'll Never Smile Again. The next year, in 1942, again the Tommy Dorsey Band will appear in another movie for MGM. It's called Ships Ahoy with Red Skelton and Eleanor Powell. It is chiefly remembered for Frank Sinatra's unaccredited role as the Dorsey Orchestra singer. In 1943, Frank was sang as himself, credited in Reverly with Beverly, starring Ann Miller. At the same time, Columbia Records was sign him to a recording contract. Also, the draft board would classify Sinatra as 4F because of his perforated eardrum. His files will also contain concerns about his psychological viewpoint. Tommy Dorsey had signed Frank to a long-term contract, getting a high percentage of all the future earnings as a performer, before he would let him sing in his band. Not at all as gracious as Harry James was when Frank asked to leave him to go with Tommy Dorsey. Harry even wished him well. Sinatra said that he offered to buy his contract for $60,000, but Dorsey refused. 
It was reported that Willie Moretti and some of his boys came out to California and bought Sinatra's contract from Dorsey for one dollar. The Sinatras bought this house at 1121 Beverly Drive, Beverly Hills, now that he was making money. In the early part of 1944, on January the 10th, Frank and Nancy will have their second child, Frank Wayne Sinatra. He'll grow up to be a singer and look like an almost double of his father. Also in 1944, Sinatra would be cast in a movie with Jack Haley and Michelle Morgan called Higher and Higher. For the first time in America, on Columbus Day 1944, 30,000 teenagers will riot outside of New York's Paramount Theater because they couldn't get in to see Frank Sinatra. The next year in 1945, Frank will star along with Gene Kelly and Katherine Grayson. Here he is with director George Sidney discussing the scene. 1946 will be one of Frank Sinatra's biggest years. First, he'll do a 10-minute documentary entitled The House I Live In about the discrimination against a Jewish boy. Frank will receive an honorary Oscar for this film. He will also produce his debut album entitled The Voice of Frank Sinatra. He will appear in As Clouds Roll By with dozens of singers singing Jerome Kern's songs whom the story was about. On December the 22nd, 1946, mob leader Charles Lucky Luciana, who had been exiled to Italy in February by the U.S. government, called for one of the largest mob gatherings in U.S. history. The meeting was to be held at one of the best hotels in Havana, Cuba. Some 20 head mobsters from Chicago to New York and New Orleans to Tampa were called to Cuba for a five-day conference on how to extend their holdings. There was Joseph Bonanno, Frank Costello, Vito Genevieve of New York. Meyer Lansky already had his hand in Cuba under its dictator, Batista. The mob discussed expanding casino controls in Cuba and how to split up narcotics territories in the United States. And as a side issue of what to do with Bugsy Siegel in Los Angeles. The Mafia had agreed to finance Bugsy's idea for a casino in Las Vegas for one million dollars. Bugsy had already run up the bill for the Flamingo to six million. And they suspected that him and girlfriend Virginia Hill was skimming money off the top. And Virginia, or Flamingo, a pet name that Bugsy gave her, was depositing money in a foreign bank account. Bugsy was a close friend of Frank Sinatra's. So it must have been awkward for Sinatra because guess who provided entertainment for the mob conference in Havana? Frank Sinatra. He arrived with two Florida gangsters said to have been cousins of Al Capone. FBI files said that Sinatra was carrying a suitcase believed to be mob money for Luciana. When questioned about it, Frank said that he just happened to have a gig in Havana at the same time, and although he was pictured with gangsters, he didn't realize who they were. Besides, he said when he's introduced to someone, he tries to be friendly, and he'll often sit down with people for a little while. Within a year of the Havana conference, Bugsy Siegel was shot and killed in Virginia Hill's home in Los Angeles. Virginia returned the money to the mob. The next year, 1947, Frank was star with Jimmy Durante in It Happened in Brooklyn, about a soldier coming back from the war and learning Brooklyn was not as nice a place as he thought. In 1948, he'll star again with Catherine Grayson in The Kissing Bandit, where a son is forced by his family to go west and take the place of his father as leader of an outlaw gang, when the son had rather kiss than fight. Still in 1948, Frank Sinatra, Jerry Lewis, Dean Martin, and Milton Berle all performed at the wedding of Willie Moretus's daughter. And three years after his daughter's wedding, Frank's godfather, Willie Moretti, will be killed in a gangland slaying 
at Joe's Elbow Room on October the 4th, 1951 at Cliffside Park, New Jersey at the age of 57. Moretti had invited Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin to have dinner with him when Jerry came down with the mumps. They was trying to call him to tell him why they couldn't come when they heard the news over the TV about the murder. Also in 1948, on June the 20th, Frank and Nancy had their third child, Christina. She'll be called Tina and become an actress. By 1948, he had this house built in Palm Springs for a weekend getaway. He named it Twin Palms, and when he was there, it was happy hour. He would run up a Jack Daniels flag for his friends to know that it was open house. In 1949, Frank starred with Gene Kelly and Esther Williams in Take Me Out to the Ball Game. During his career, Frank Sinatra recorded 59 albums, 293 single recordings, and around 60 movies, way too much to cover them all. On February the 14, 1950, Nancy Sinatra announced she was separating from Frank because he had become involved with actress Ava Gardner. Two months later, on April the 26th, while performing on stage at the Copacabana, he hemorrhaged his vocal cords, and he'll be unable to sing for almost a year. Frank and Nancy's divorce became final on October the 29th, 1951. A week later, he'll marry Ava Gardner on November the 7th. Now, Nancy knew that Frank was having affairs through the years, but his public ones bothered her the most. She never married again, and she stayed true to his memory. She continued living in the Beverly Hills home, raising his kids. Through the years, Frank would come by to see the kids and spend the night. She was thankful for that time cooking his favorite meals. He would sometimes call when he was worried or things wasn't going right. He would talk to her for hours. When Frank and Ava married, they moved into his Twin Palms home in Palm Springs. Their marriage was rough and rocky from the start, with constant fighting. After two years, on 29 October 1953, they separated. Frank was devastated and blamed Peter Lawford for going with Garner and did not speak to him for years. According to Kitty Kelly's book, she stated a friend of Frank found him in the elevator of his 57th Street apartment in New York with his wrists slashed. Before leaving, Abel used her influence to help improve Frank's sagging career by getting him a part in From Here to Eternity as soldier Angelo Maggio, winning him the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor and the Golden Globe Award. In 1955, he produced the album In the Wee Small Hours, and he also starred in the movie Man with a Golden Arm with Kim Novak. His career was doing somewhat better, and he did five movies in 1955, including Guys and Dolls with Marlon Brando and The Tender Trap with Debbie Reynolds. Sinatra did three movies in 1957, including Pal Joey with Rita Hayworth. On 18 October 1957, The Frank Sinatra Show will premiere on ABC and be canceled eight months later on 27 June. 1958. Also in 57, his divorce with Ava Gardner was finalized, despite his attempt to get her back. Along the end of the year, his movie contract was canceled, and he was released from his agent, all within a nine-week period. According to Frank's daughter Tina, Ava Gardner was the love of his life, and years later, Ava will say that she regretted being a movie star and not having a normal life and raising kids. And if she ever got married again, it would be a redo with Frank Sinatra. She never married again after Frank. And in 1986, Ava was paralyzed with a stroke that affected her speech and left her bedridden. Frank will pay medical bills some $50,000 worth. He will pay for a private plane to have her brought from London to the United States to see specialists. He will also attend to her funeral arrangements, 
when she passes away on the 25th of January, 1990, from bronchial pneumonia at the age of 67. She's buried at the Sunset Memorial Park, Smithfield, North Carolina, by her family. Now, at the time Ava divorced Frank in 1957, he had moved out of his house Twin Palms at Palm Springs and purchased this house at 70120. It is now Frank Sinatra Drive, number 25, in Rancho Mirage, California. It'll be known as The Compound. In 1958, Sinatra recorded Come Fly With Me, and by this time, Frank had moved his operation to Las Vegas, where he created the Rat Pack. This picture was in 1962 of Sinatra, Dean Martin, Sammy Davis Jr., Peter Lawford, and Joey Bishop. The next year, in 1959, he starred in the movie A Hole in the Head with Eleanor Parker. In 1960, Frank produced and paid for the movie Ocean's Eleven about war buddies who devised a plan to rob five Las Vegas casinos. When Frank read the script, he said, hell, let's do this for real. The Red Pack will film by day and do their nightclub act at the Sands by night. In 1960, presidential candidate John F. Kennedy will come to Las Vegas. Frank introduced Sam Giancano to Kennedy, who needed the gangsters helped securing union votes. Sinatra also introduced Judith Exner to both men. Kennedy stayed a couple of nights at Frank's compound at his Rancho Mirage home. Also in 1960, Frank bought a part of a casino called Cal Neva because it was located on the California and Nevada state line. In 1963, FBI spotted Sam Giancano going in the back door of the casino and Frank lost his Nevada gambling license. His license won't be restored until Ronald Reagan becomes president and as a favor to Frank. Also, Sinatra would record Nice and Easy in 1960 and leave Capitol Records and form his own label, Reprise Records. On February the 8th, 1960, Frank Sinatra will receive three stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. One for motion pictures located at 1600 Vine Street. One for television located at 6538 Hollywood Boulevard. And one for recordings at 1637 Vine. In 1962, Frank will give one of his best performances as the Manchurian Candidate with Janet Leigh. It has over the years become an occult film. In 1962, Frank fixed up his home in Rancho Mirage, thinking that the now President Kennedy would be staying with him when he come west. He installed a helicopter pad, and when he was snubbed by the Kennedys because of his connections with the Mafia, because they didn't think it would look good to the public, Frank blamed Kennedy's brother-in-law, Peter Lawford, and never spoke to him again. On December the 8th, 1963, 19-year-old Frank Sinatra Jr. was performing at the Harris Club Lodge in Lake Tahoe on the California-Nevada state line. Two 23-year-old classmates from Los Angeles had been following Frank Jr. for weeks waiting for the right moment. Around 9 p.m., Frank Jr. was resting in his dressing room with a friend when Barry Keenan and Joe Amsler knocked on the door pretending to be delivery men. They tied up the friend and took Junior by gunpoint to a waiting van. Frank's friend quickly got free and called authorities. Roadblocks actually stopped the kidnappers, but they bluffed their way through. John Irwin, the third kidnapper, called Frank Sr. and demanded $250,000 to be delivered by instructions over payphones. Frank Sr., run out of money while talking to the kidnappers and thought that he might never see his son again. It's said that he carried a roll of dimes for years after that. The 250000 was placed between these two buses in Sepulveda, California. While two kidnappers was picking up the money, Irwin got nervous and freed Frank Jr. He was found wandering a few miles in Bel Air 
A security guard took him to his mother Nancy's home close by. Gangster Sam Giancano called and offered his help to Frank Sr. And Frank said, thanks, but the FBI has it under control. With Frank Jr.'s help and an informant, the kidnappers were caught and prosecuted. Now this is the recovery money. The entire episode took four days. During the kidnapping, Frank Sr. was filming Robin and the Seven Hoods with Dean Martin, Sammy Davis Jr., and Bing Crosby. Sinatra was so upset, production on the film almost shut down. In 1965, Frank will star in Von Ryan's Express with Trevor Howard. It's about a World War II prison escape by capturing a train. Frank will record one of his best songs that year, September of My Years. Also in 1965, he will perform in an Emmy Award-winning TV show special. It's called Frank Sinatra, A Man and His Music. This is Sinatra in 1965, holding a drink before taking the stage at the Sands. While Sinatra was filming Von Ryan's Express, he met 19-year-old Mia Farrow, who was on the Peyton Place TV show filming close by. The unlikely couple married in a small private ceremony in Las Vegas on July the 19th, 1966. Mia was 21 years old, and it was her first marriage, and Frank was 50, his third. Frank wanted her to give up her film career. She didn't want to. In 1967, while still married to Mia, Frank will play a tough Miami private detective hired to retrieve stolen jewelry from a millionaire's daughter played by Jill St. John. Within a year after Tony Rome was finished, Frank and Mia Farrow were divorced in August of 1968 after two years of marriage. Within five months of their divorce, Frank's dead, Marty Sinatra, will pass away at a Houston hospital from a fatal heart attack on January the 24th, 1969. Marty was placed at the Desert Memorial Park, Cathedral City, California. He was 76 years old. The next year in 1970, Frank would team up with George Kennedy in Dirty Dingus McGee. Sometimes they're friends and sometimes they're not. Sometimes one is the law, and sometimes the other is the law. It just depended on the situation. In 1971, Sinatra retired, but within two years he came back out of retirement and resumed performing at Caesar's Palace. Now this is a picture of Frank Sinatra taken on the 11th of April, 1976, after his appearance at the Westchester Premier Theater in Terrytown, New York with Carlos Gambino, the most powerful crime boss in America, on the far right, and his underboss, Paul Castellano. On the left is Jimmy the Weasel Fontano, West Coast crime boss, or at least he was till he testified against the mob and was placed in the witness protection program. After Carlos Gambino died of a heart attack, his brother-in-law, Paul Castellano, had been appointed by Carlos to take his place. Paul Castellano was executed at the Sparks Steakhouse in the Upper Side of New York in 1985, presumed by John Gotti. On July 11, 1976, Frank Sinatra and Barbara Ann Marks were married in Palm Springs. Barbara had been married to Zeppo Marks, youngest of the famous Marx Brothers comedy team. She met Zeppo while she was working as a model and Las Vegas showgirl. They lived in Palm Springs, close to Sinatra and other actors. Barbara had been divorced from Zeppo three years before she married Sinatra. It was her third and final marriage and his fourth and final. They were married almost 22 years before his death. Six months after Frank's marriage to Barbara, he was performing at Caesar's Palace, Las Vegas, when he sent his private jet to Southern California to pick up his mother, Dolly, and a friend, Mrs. Anthony Carboni, to fly them to Vegas to see his show and gamble, which Dolly loved to do. Frank even set things up 
so that his mother would win when she played. On January the 6th, 1977, Frank Sinatra received word that the plane with his mother and friend, along with pilots, Donald Ware, Gerald Foley, crashed into a mountainside and there were no survivors. Dolly Sinatra was interred at the Desert Memorial Park Cemetery in Cathedral City by her husband. Dolly Sinatra was 80 years old. In 1980, Frank will record his most famous and successful song of all, New York, New York. It's become the official song of the city of New York. Two years later, in 1982, Sinatra was signed a $16 million three-year contract at the Golden Nugget Casino. In 1985, he was presented with the Medal of Freedom by President Ronald Reagan. By 1995, Frank's health was failing with bladder cancer, heart, and kidney disease. They decided to sell their desert compound home and moved to 915 North Foothill Drive in Beverly Hills, where it was closer to his family for them to visit. On May the 14th, 1998, 82-year-old Francis Albert Sinatra's condition suddenly worsened and he was taken to the Theaters sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles. The doctors called his wife Barbara immediately, who had gone out to dinner at the time he was hospitalized. According to Frank's youngest daughter, Tina, in her book entitled My Father's Daughter, her dad was being worked on by doctors for one and a half hours before expiring at 10.50 p.m. from a heart attack. No one called his children until after his death. Frank Sinatra was buried at the Desert Memorial Park in Cathedral City, where both his parents are resting. Eighteen years after his father's death, Frank Sinatra Jr. will pass away on the 16th of March, 2016, from cardiac arrest. Frank Jr. was on tour, Sinatra Sings Sinatra, at Daytona Beach, Florida. He was scheduled to give a concert at the Peabody Auditorium in Daytona Beach. He was found in his hotel room when he missed rehearsal. Frank Sinatra Jr. was cremated and his remains was given to his family. He was 72 years old. Only 17 months after Frank Sinatra Jr. death, the last wife of Frank Sinatra, Barbara Mark Sinatra, would pass away from natural causes on the 25th of July, 2017, at the age of 90. Barbara was known for her much charity work in behalf of needy children. She's buried at the Desert Memorial Park Cemetery next to her husband, Frank Sinatra. Frank's first wife, Nancy Barbado Sinatra, will pass away on July the 13th, 2018, at the age of 101. Nancy was married only once in her lifetime. Although she married one of the most famous men in the world and lived for years in the Hollywood social scene, she remained true to her only love by always being there when he needed her and when he didn't. Her main joy was looking after her children because she knew that when she took care of hers, she was also taking care of his. <laughs> 